the Irish guy, Anya. Manchester United fans are losing their mind to Frankie de Jong. But first, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. I mean, look, uh, the summer is upon us, right? I mean, the heat wave was definitely upon me. I mean, my shoulders still look like the belly of a dehydrated camel. But lad, when you're down the beach, oh, you really don't want to have hair coming out of your shorts? No, it'll make bystanders puke in their mouth. But get the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, and you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a nice little travel bag. The Lawnmower 4.0, no, it's not used to behead daffodils. Now nah, it's, um, for your nasty body hair? Ah, yeah, you. I'm looking at you! It features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Oh, that's good! Cause nobody wants to walk around the beach with blood in their armpits. It's got a 7000 RPM motor, a new multifunction on and off switch, and you've got the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off. Oh yeah! And it's waterproof! I'll, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this in the sea. I mean, you'll have to stress mothers asking the lifeguard to phone the police. But everyone who watches this channel, they get a 20% off plus free shipping when you use the code IRISHGUY20 at checkout. So go on, head over to manscaped.com so you can finally stop looking like a hairy hobbit. Hello, I am the Irish guy and Frankie de Jong. Um, I might be reading this wrong, but by the sounds of things, it sounds like the guy would sooner chew off his own feet than sign for Manchester United right now. I mean, here's a theory. Maybe. Maybe he's just a bit annoyed by every Man United fan on the internet calling him Frankie. Um, I'm sorry, does he look like he belongs in the Saturdays? Ah, uh, well, actually, actually, with those feminine facial features. Well, yeah, actually, he does look a bit like if one of the Spice Girls drank testosterone pills for lunch. But no, 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 lads, his name is Frankie. All right, that's an E, not an A. But right now, Manchester United fans are offended that De Jong has decided not to jump ahead first at the opportunity to sign for this club. And even some Chelsea fans too. Manchester United are a Goliath of a football club. Who on earth does Frankie de Jong think he is to constantly be turning them down? What? Hmm, who does Frankie de Jong think he is to turn down Thursday nights in the Europa League? Uh, I'm sorry, why is he acting like de Jong is currently on the payroll of Stoke? I mean, he's already at his dream club at Barcelona. Maybe, just maybe, he doesn't want to give up on his Disney fairy tale dream at the age of 25. I'm sorry, but this, this is his dream job. I mean, you know who else is a Goliath institution rory? Um, Tesco's. But would you suddenly like to trade your top for geek to suddenly start working the graveyard shift by cleaning cat poo out of the sink in that shop? Or just wiping up wet broccoli flavored baby sick in the vegetable aisle? I mean, this is a man who back in January said that he would sign a six year deal at the new camp if he was given the chance. This is clearly a boy who grew up worshipping Johan Cruyff. Well, guess what? Um, he's practically been the godfather of Barcelona for the last 50 years. I mean, honestly, he's probably sitting upstairs in the new camp attic, stroking a cat, sucking an orange, and threatening to act plumbers in a sandwich shop. Think of the traditions of Manchester United. Think about what Manchester United represent. The honour it is to play for that club. An honour. An honour to play in a team with Harry Maguire at the back. Look, playing for Manchester United is a big deal, yes. But uh, so is playing for Barcelona. And they're in the Champions League. Am I missing something here? Lads, look at the Ajax alumni from 2019. I mean, that was when the band broke up and they were all shepherded out to a bunch of European super clubs. Well, lads, it was like the Oliver Twist gang leaving the orphanage and getting fostered by rich families across the globe. I mean, his mate, Matthijs de Ligt, uh, he had a bit of a bumpy, rocky stage Juventus, so yeah. That's the equivalent of being adopted by a wealthy family, sure, but really by a strict mum who threatens to break your legs if you forget to lay the table. I mean, Hakim Ziyech went and won the Champions with Chelsea. Okay, great. He hit the jackpot there. Allah, uh, he is on the bench quite a bit. So again, it's been like going to a lovely, warm family. But they do actually forget to buy you a birthday cake. I mean, De Jong himself went to a cozy little family like Barcelona, but uh, not really sure how they got past social services and given the green light to adopt because soon that family be so poor they have to microwave their socks for tea. But crucially, Donny van de Beek, De Jong's blonde sidekick, his Dutch twin. He um, He's moved to Manchester United and been utterly miserable. So again, if Oliver Twist's mate had been adopted by a family who made him live under the stairs and fed him nothing but dead rats for dinner, then, then do you really think he's gonna want to join him? I mean, De Jong is probably still mate with Van de Beek on WhatsApp. So do you reckon he's getting glowing endorsements of the club? No! 
Oh! And also, why would De Jong want to leave Barcelona now? He is playing under arguably the finest technical passer to ever play in his position. I mean, Chris, would you think he'd want a full season of taking tips from Xavi instead of, oh, I don't know, being forced to drink tea with Steve McLaren? I mean, I'm sure Steve is a nice guy. But Christ, well, I can't help but feel. Even he must feel awkward being a Manchester United employee. You know, I've been like in the same way Paul McShane was on their payroll last season. I'm guessing Steve is suffocated by imposter syndrome to the point where he's probably just going to spend the next nine months trying to break the ice with knock-knock jokes. Ah, try all you like, Steve. It's still going to be obvious to everyone that nowadays you got the footballing brain of a spongy shepherd's pie. Frankie de Jong is the modern-day Cesc Fabregas. We have seen how this story plays out before. I mean, right now, there's murmurs that he's slightly unwanted at Barcelona, right? And he's got both Man United and Chelsea chasing him. A Chelsea team who just finished third in the league, versus a Man United team in the Europa League. I'm sorry, but we've seen this before. It's the exact same choice. I mean, according to Rory Jennings, Fabregas shouldn't have dared turn down such a mammoth opportunity like Manchester United. All that, it would have been a bit awkward for him posing for photos of Carrington. When there's the unsaid element in the room that, oh yeah, this guy went through a pizza into the face of the club's king. I mean, Fabregas said no to David Boyce. Probably because he didn't want to spend his mid-twenties playing under a former Everton coach. I mean, come on, this is a world champion at 23. I mean, he'd probably sooner have looked ice cream off a bus seat, or eating a sandwich off Michael Gambon's lap than join Moisey Ball. I mean, he chose to stay at Barcelona for another year, scored 13 goals and weighed him with 17 assists in his last season, then moves to Chelsea and gets 24 assists in his debut season and wins the Premier League for the first time in his life. I mean, had he moved to Old Trafford, he'd have probably just been a slightly better Morgan schneider -Lin. just utterly suffocated and neglected at Louis van Gaal's mechanic midfield. I mean, I was like, you think Bruno Fernandes complains? I'm guessing Fabregas, playing for 2015 Manchester United. Oh, he just spent a third of the match moaning at the ref, flipping off the fans, and silently wishing Fellaini was dead. Fabregas did not want to join Manchester United in 2013. And Frankie de Jong does not want to join in 2022. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, he's playing for Barcelona. I'm pretty sure he's happy where he is. I mean, right now, Xavi has come out and said that he values Frankie very much, and that he can give them a lot as a centre back. And Twitter have taken these quotes and chosen to explode. Zavi saying De Jong is a centre back. Get your bags packed, Frankie. It's time to go. Frankie De Jong just played as a centre back versus Inter Miami. This Barca policy to make a leap keeps killing me. De Jong, Frankie playing as a centre back. They're saying Frankie De Jong was playing centre back. Frankie De Jong got subbed on a centre back last night. Yeah, relax. It, it, it's centre back. It's not like he's just been told to eat cereal out of his granny's armpits. Frankie De Jong must read the room. Barca is done with him. Even Zavi wants to play him as a centre back. Interested to see if Frankie De Jong accepts his role as a substitute centre back. The ultimate humiliation. Wait, hold on. Is that Frankie De Jong playing centre back? Yes! Why are you acting like you've just walked in on your granddad wearing a mini skirt? It's not actually that surprising. People seem to be reading into the Zavi comment with a Cluedo microscope. Uh, this is Zavi's way of threatening to y'all. Lads, lads, relax. You make it sound like he's just told Frankie that he'll be spending the majority of the season just ironing corner flags and buying milk for the canteen fridge. That by daring to ask De Jong for like a half in pre-season, that that's his way of telling De Jong in no uncertain terms that he thinks he's about as much use in the field as a malnourished kid. I mean, apparently, this is like Weatherspoons wanting to sack that idiot barman, so that they try to make him quit by asking him to clean cat sick off the owner's car and spend three hours of a Thursday morning doing a taste test on urinal cakes. Like, De Jong was playing centre-back against Inter Miami. He was playing against David Beckham and Phil Neville's children. I mean, I'm not even sure if we're allowed to call Romeo Beckham a professional footballer. I mean, does he even get paid? Isn't it just an allowance from his dad? I'm convinced his football career is all just part of an elaborate TikTok skit. And again, Harvey Neville. Is he good? Or does he have the first touch of a chocolate muffin? You could have stuck a lampshade in Barca's defence and they'd still have left that ground with a clean sheet. I mean, yeah, I know, Gonzalo Higuain is a handful. Well, he's not bothering the Burger King staff to sneak him out of school bag worth of chicken nuggets. But I mean, he played the first half up front and De Jong played the second half centre back. They never actually cross paths. But this is Barcelona. Why are we acting like playing midfielders at centre back is some sort of embarrassing sin? I mean, look at the all conquering Barca teams that Xavi played in. I mean, Yaya Torre was asked to play a Champions League final in a back four. And guess what? They won and kept a clean sheet. And lads, that was with Ronaldo on the pitch. Javi Mascherano, one of the greatest defensive midfielders of his generation. Well, Barcelona picked him as a centre back nearly 300 times, meaning that he actually played more games in defence than in the field throughout his entire career. I mean, did, did he moan? Was that seen as 
bullying? No, it, it was tactical genius. And he just went and won every club trophy in sport. And can I remind you, this isn't just some harebrained pre-season experiment that Xavi has just thought up overnight after someone spiked his cocoa pups. No, I promise you, this is not him trying to make Frankie cry. No, here is the reality. Although, to be honest, he looks like someone who probably burst into tears watching the final episode of Neighbours. I mean, I'm not trying to say that Young is a feeble little boy, but... Oh, he definitely wears Pikachu pajamas. But, but like, here's the reality. He, Frankie de Jong has played as a centre back nearly 30 times in his career. During the 17 18 season, Eric Ten Hag had him as an Ajax centre half for a third of the season, covering the entire winter months. He has played as a Barcelona centre back against PSG in the Champions League, and they didn't lose the match. Xavi is right. He does make a good ball playing defender, too. I mean, what is the issue? He's an intelligent footballer with insane technical ability. I mean, forget English hype for a minute. He's probably a better centre back than Ben White. It's just that he's even better in midfield. And like, it's not like he was just playing on the right hand side of, of a back three. Like we've seen fullbacks like Kyle Walker do at times. No, 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 no. It was full on. Entire responsibility playing at the heart of Barca's defence. I get why the English audiences are outraged by what Xavi asked him to do. Because for most mere mortal midfielders, you know, the ones born in Surrey, Plymouth or Stoke, then being asked to do that, yeah, it would be the equivalent of being on board an airplane. And the pilot suddenly asks you if you'd like to have a picnic on the wing. But, that's the difference. De Jong grew up in a fluid, Cruyff-inspired Ajax system, where positions are always alternating. I mean, sure, old-fashioned, traditional British CMs like Robbie Savage or Mark Noble. Yeah, they'd have vomited up a kidney at the thought of going centre-back. But lads, this is Ajax. This is what they do. I mean, Christ above, Manchester United fans, you've just signed Lissandro Martinez as an all-concrete centre-back, right? Even though he's only slightly taller than a hobbit. Yeah, guess what? He's played in midfield too. Over 20 times. Yeah, I mean, for these rigid thinkers, I must be blowing your mind right now. As I feel like someone trying to educate their granddad about why there might be a female James Bond. If you truly think that playing De Jong as a centre half in preseason is some sort of insult that is the equivalent of spitting in his face, then you just haven't been paying attention. The big issue is that Barcelona wants him to take a pay cut to stay, right? I mean, they also owe him millions in deferred wages that he took during lockdown. So this is all a bit messy, and I have a feeling when he's 53 years old, he's probably finally going to be taking this club to court. But apparently he earns £354,000 a week. Well, I'm sorry, quitting your dream Barcelona move and choosing to move to rainy England when you don't want to and accepting Europa League football purely because of money. That is the complete wrong reason to move. Just ask Angel Di Maria. Ozzy, Manchester United fans, just accept this. Frankie de Jong does not want to move to Old Trafford. He doesn't. So, just, just move on.